This is Conversations on Discipleship with Father Adam Streitenberger from St. Gabriel Catholic Radio and Diocese of Columbus Media. Welcome to Conversations on Discipleship. I'm your host, Father Adam Streitenberger. With me today is Nathan Forstoffel. Welcome, Nathan. Hey, how's it going, Father? All right, great to have you. Let's start with a prayer in the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, we give you thanks for all of your blessings. Um, we ask, O oh Lord, that you um, guide us um, in your ways today. Um, open our hearts to hear your voice and to know your will that we might be faithful to you in all things. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Amen. So, Nathan, um, you are a student at Ohio State University, mm -hmm. but you're also a focused missionary, sort of a yeah. focused student missionary. Mm -hmm. um, as you know, so often with conversations on discipleship, um, we talk, we always like to begin with hearing your story, how you came to know the Lord. Now, I suspect yeah. focus probably has something to do with that, <laughs> but um, maybe you could sh share with us your story. Yeah, no, for sure. Um, yeah, so it's a little interesting. So I grew up um, kind of a cradle Catholic. Um, so parents were Catholic. Um, they took me to Mass every week, got introduced to that. Um, but I feel like, um, like a lot of different cradle Catholics, um, didn't really encounter the Lord um, until later in life. Um, so it was started in high school when I started actually questioning um, and inquiring um, into why we do what we do and going into what that is. And it took a lot of soul searching and a lot of things. Um, but basically, um, it, what, it, what it came down to was the Eucharist. Um, and we went to daily mass the one day. Um, and basically you get like that kind of that matrix moment of like the priest like saying the words consecration, creation. Um, and I heard those words a million times. Um, and basically just in that moment, just asked, what if, um, and that's really the first time that I encountered the Lord for who he was. Um, and from that, um, started talking to a couple, bunch of different people and it was the perfect timing, um, at that time. Uh, a friend of mine named Matt, I had only talked to him a few times uh, at that point, but he asked my mom for my email. Um, and so he he reached out to me through email. Um, and so we started emailing back and forth and we started hanging out. Um, and I kind of held faith at like that arm's length, um, as a lot of people in high school do. Um, but uh, he, 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 said he was patient with me. I mean, he was always a willing to answer my questions. Um, so he invited me to go to youth group, and I said, nah, not really for me. Uh, invited me to go to Mass. I'm like, uh, like that's okay. Um, but he, uh, then he said, okay, what if we just like went to a Reds game with a couple guys? Um, so with a couple guys that actually go here to Ohio State, we went to a Reds game, and it was a ton of fun. Um, then we was like, hey, we're going to get BW3s a night on Thursday. Uh, you should come. Um, and since he was willing to take the time um, to meet with me um, and to just be my friend, um, especially I was in a vulnerable situation in high school, um, I encountered Jesus through him and then through the Eucharist. Um, so him walking with me, I started coming to the youth group because he, he was my friend. I started going to Mass and things like that. And I started looking around um, at youth group and at Mass, um, and I just realized, I'm like, these people aren't weird. <laughs> like, they're not, like, they're not these usual things. Like, all the guys here, like, like they like sports, they like girls, they like all the things that I'm into. Um, and it's just like, yeah, it's it, it was just like... Um, almost this radical casualness um, of Catholicism um, that I'd never really seen before. Um, because of that, because he was willing to walk with me, I encountered Jesus in the Eucharist at that daily Mass that day. Um, and I encountered um, Jesus through others with that um, and just continued to walk. And then coming to college, um, ended up finding the, the Newman Center here at Ohio State, um, which really was a spiritual home. Um, for me as a, a lot of different groups that their BCAT student nights um, and by, through Bible studies there and learned uh, the Lord through scripture um, and started to develop um, actually what a relationship with Jesus looks like, which is through that consistent prayer, um, that access to the sacraments um, and can just continue to encounter him through that um, and through the community. Um, but the Lord wasn't done <laughs> kind of yet like that, and he's never done. Um, and he started um, through that prayer life starting like just like just tearing away at my heart just a little bit um, and just like revealing this heart for mission. Um, so that's when a year ago, hello, Focus. Um, <laughs> so Focus started showing up 
Um, so obviously getting towards the end of my college career, um, I had a couple job offers at a couple places, um, a couple other opportunities that I could have pursued. And I was really starting to discern where I wanted to go. So I could have been all, anywhere over the country. Um, I had a couple places um, offering and a lot of places that I was not familiar with. But so that was exciting. Um, but basically... Uh, Focus came here, and they start, uh, one of the Focus missionaries, Pat, introduced himself to me, um, and we started getting tacos. <laughs> like It was like the same kind of thing that had happened with Matt with me in high school, um, and he started investing in me um, as a person, um, and through his witness there with that and recognized this huge heart for mission. Um, and so I went to a Focus interview weekend because he invited me, um, and same with like a lot of other ministry organizations. Um, I, I did some discernment with them with SBO and with a couple really, really other awesome organizations, the Culture Project. Um, but through the interview process with Focus, I realized um, that Focus does the same ministry um, how I was ministered to. It's the same way. It's incarnational ministry. So um, I started getting involved with Bible studies and other things through them. Um, where you basically, it's the same way that Jesus did it. Um, he walks with a few, invest heavily in them. Um, I was one of those people that was invested into, um, and then were sent out. So it's like that build, uh, the building those relationships, um, or that winning, winning over for Christ, building those relationships, um, and then sending. Um, and out of that, um, obviously, I had a huge desire for mission, and that is now manifesting as a focused missionary. Um, and fulfilling that kind of that call um, that we're all called to in uh, Matthew 28 to go forth and make disciples of all nations. So that's a kind of quick highlight summary. Yeah, There's a no, lot excellent. of uh, details there in that, but that's just kind of the general summary. The, um, a, you know, a couple, well, one, one thing that really strikes me is, um, you know, your experience with um, this Matt who kind of mentored you, yeah. um, discipled you, but also like this sort of, realization of the humanity of Catholicism. So yeah. like the people that were at yeah. youth group were normal people, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. who, you mm-hmm. know, like really human. And I, I, I do think that especially maybe those who um, have fallen away from the church or aren't, you know, have had really no ex- religious experience, there is a real danger that they think, well, you know, Religion is for angels, you know, yeah. or like people who don't have real human struggles or real human yeah. experiences or like real human things. Yeah. And one of the things, and I'm sure it's, I mean, it, I know it's part of focus method and it definitely sounds like it would be part of your method is the idea that we, you know, we have to show people that Catholicism enables us to live our humanity in a new way, mm-hmm. but yet we're human. Yeah, no, absolutely. No, it's, it's, yeah, it's here to give us greater freedom to live more fully as who we are. Um, and that's something I've been actually praying with a lot recently, um, is how, yeah, um, like the, the first lie that we're told, um, in the garden of Eden is that God is not good. Like that's the first lie that Satan, the serpent tells us with that. Um, and so we confuse what God's identity are and what our identity is. Um, and that's where sin comes in. Sin, like it takes us and it like kind of makes our identity murky. Um, because we don't see ourselves for who we are. Um, because, yeah, when, then that gets compromised. Um, and I think that's interesting when you're living mission now with that. Um, a big part of living mission is just, like, living who God intended you to be um, and living that out So and having that relationship with him. Because ultimately, that's all of our ultimate, like, our penultimate, like, purpose, our penultimate vocation is to be in union with God. So, like, living just relationship with God, uh, so many fruit comes out of that relationship um, by just living to the fullness of what humanity is, which is d- designation and uh, the purpose of humanity, which is relationship. And, you know, um, Nathan, I kind of alluded to it at the beginning, but you are sort of unique. Um, <laughs> you're um, you're yeah. kind of this historic figure, um, whether you realize it or not. But, you know, Focus came to OSU a year ago. Mm-hmm. Um, so this is into the second year. Yeah. And um, you're the first, since Focus has come to OSU, the first kind of missionary mm-hmm. to enter into Focus from Ohio State. Yeah. Um, which is, is, is pretty huge. You know, it's yeah. already a year here. Foc- there's already this fruit that's, that's, mm-hmm. that's, um, that's coming. And, you know, I think, um, you know, for maybe our listeners who, you know, it's a real sacrifice. Missionaries, you know, they they make this sacrifice for Christ and for the church to give a part of their time, um, 
you know, a portion of their life um, to the Lord in service. So, you know, obviously we're very thankful for your <laughs> sacrifice and the sacrifice of all the lay missionaries in the diocese. But, um, you know, what I think as, as you're getting ready to go on mission mm-hmm. um, and you graduate in the next couple months mm-hmm. um, and we'll be, who knows where you'll be sent to, but what is, I mean, I guess maybe you could help us to understand kind of the, the, the feeling or the excitement that you have um, having received this great gift from Focus and now getting ready to go full-time on mission. Yeah, no, so it's really exciting because um, I've kind of got like this appetizer semester that we've yeah. had here before. Um, so I'm doing a lot of mission work with the team here. Um, so we have our, our, our great Focus team here. We have five other Focus missionaries outside of myself. So I'm still, I'm leading Bible studies. I'm helping lead a lot of these events. Um, I'm still meeting with a lot of students and discipleship groups um, and prepping uh, a lot of that. So it's kind of good because it kind of helps ease you in um, instead of just like kind of this like that whole like baptism by fire just mm-hmm. like throws you in that. So it's good. Um, I think the Lord knew that I needed a little bit of that uh, preparation time. Um, so he's using my weakness well um, in that, but it's, it, it's really exciting. Um, and it's super exciting. Cause like, yeah, as I talked about before is like, yeah, I came to know Jesus through like relation through relational ministry. Um, and so like when I said yes to focus, um, a lot of it was because I'm like, I've been evangelized the same way. Um, so there's this sense of familiarity, um, which is awesome. Cause I know, I, like we, we know the, the tenets of the faith. We know the truth. Um, we have this beautiful thing, um, that, you just have to invite people in to it. Um, so, like, there's a sense of familiarity with that, um, but also a huge sense of unknown because you don't know where you're going. Um, you don't know uh, who your team director will be, who your other teammates will be, um, what the campus culture is like. Is it somewhere that, like, uh, is cl- similar to my hometown um, or similar to Ohio State big school or whether I go to um, Loris College, <laughs> like a tiny little school? Um, because all these different people are worthy of Jesus. Um, so I'm excited of course to go. Um, but I mean, obviously there's unknowns to that. Um, yeah, there's so, it's a lot of mixed emotions and things like that, but, um, overall just excitement. Like you're saying. Well, excellent. Well, thank you so much uh, for joining us, Nathan. You've been listening to conversations on discipleship. I'm your host, father, Adam Streitenberger. With me um, today has been our newest focus missionary, Nathan Forstoffel. Thank you, Nathan. And until next time, peace and all good.